Blog Talk Radio. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skyline office studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators... The man they call Ghost. Yeah, what's going on, folks? And thank you for tuning in with me to another edition of True Capitalist Radio. And of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. This is episode number 122, 122 for all the folks that are keeping track of the True Capitalist broadcast. And, of course, before we get into anything else, I'd like for everybody to please retweet the broadcast, go to the social networks, go to the blogs, go to the forums, spread it around like wildfire, and let everybody know that we're in effect in the house right now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, anyway, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. It is Wednesday, hump day. I know a lot of you, uh, you know, brony and uh, homosexual persuasion ass clowns that post YouTube videos about me like to call this Fruit Bowl Wednesday because it seems to me like, uh, you know, we got a lot of fruit bowls uh, walking around out here listening to the True Capitalist radio broadcast. And the thing about it is I was just completely unaware, completely unaware that we actually had this much of a gay contingent listening to the True Capitalist broadcast. All right? Now, don't get me wrong, it doesn't surprise me because yours truly is a capitalist. And, uh, you know, most of the homosexuals that are out here working, uh, you know, they're, they're taxpayers, you know? I mean, homosexuals, what are, what are they, makeup artists, you know, they're cutting hair, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, they, they, they're bartenders at gay bars, whatever they're doing, you know, servicing glory holes, 10 bucks a pop, whatever. All right. Whatever they're doing, they're paying taxes for it, and they're basically having to pay an exuberant amount of taxes because they have no dependents because they're homosexual. Uh, they have to pay an exuberant amount of taxes because, uh, you know, they, they, they can't get married. So as a result, what's happening here is you've got these homosexuals out here paying for the breeders. So it makes perfect sense on why you have a, a humongous homosexual contingent listening to the True Capitalist radio broadcast. All right? Anyway, folks, let me go ahead and get through the markets, folks. It's Wednesday, hump day, and, uh, you know, I keep, I hate to keep tooting my own horn here, but beep, beep. Because <laughs> what did I say about three weeks ago? What did I say three weeks ago when everybody was running from the market? We saw Dow Jones Industrials at 11,800. What, what was I, what was I, what was I saying? I was telling everybody to entertain plays. I was talking about Everybody to entertain ideas of investment in the equities market, folks. And if you'd have been listening to me, you'd have been making some serious capital. You understand? <laughs> you'd be making some serious goddamn capital, for Christ's sake. Let me get through the markets first, folks, because uh, <laughs> I'm making money, baby. I'm making money. I don't know about you. Maybe you're out there playing with your Peter Popper to, you know, old pictures of Ricky Martin's asshole. But me, I'm here. I'm making money. God. Damn, it feels good to be a capitalist. And by the way, since I'm uh, you know making so much money on those bottom feeding opportunities that uh, you know I partook in when I was telling everybody that they should be partaking in it, uh, let me tell you, I have stocked up on some great bottles of liquor. You know what I'm saying? Some bottles of some libations here. And uh, for you folks that know, I bought myself some Louis, some cognac, baby cognac, the drink that's drank by G's. You understand what I'm saying here? Uh, probably one of the few products that Paris actually produces, or excuse me, France actually produces. It's worth a crap besides champagne. Uh, but let me tell you, I'm drinking on some cognac, Louis. You know, what, what did uh, what was that one rapper that said? I think it was Biggie Smalls, that fat uh, diabetic bastard that said, uh, "Birthdays was the worst days. Now we sipping on Louis when we thirsty." <laughs> And 
that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. And cheers to everybody out there who's listening. This is uh, you know the Wednesday edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. Let me take a sip of this cognac here. Oh, oh man, it's so smooth, so smooth and good, baby. Cheers to everybody out there for Christ's sake. And all you idiots that are calling me an alcoholic, I hate to keep reiterating this. I'm not. All right, an alcoholic drinks the same cheap ass bottle of hooch. Every single goddamn day of his life, I don't. You understand? I'm a connoisseur. You people need to get that through your goddamn heads. You need to make the distinguishing uh, difference between them both, all right? I'm not an alcoholic. I'm a connoisseur out here, all right? Every time you hear me drink, I'm drinking something new. Because you want to know why? Because I appreciate the libation. I actually take the time to go out and actually, uh, you know, appreciate the nuances of the taste of every different libation that's out there. Uh, and, and I'm not talking about the cheap rot gut crap either. I'm talking about premium. I'm talking about high class libations, baby. I'm talking about three hundred dollars a bottle because I can do that. <laughs> anyway, folks, uh, let me go ahead and get through the markets here. Uh, as you know, we're seeing pluses. Uh, as a matter of fact, I mean, we were actually seeing a mixed bag throughout the day. And then all of a sudden, there towards the end, the market bulls took control of the equities market, and everything, everything increased on the plus side in the equities markets there at the end of the day. Dow Jones Industrial closes out, and get this. Look, look, look. This is why I'm saying I'm the prognosticator of prognosticators, all right? Three weeks ago, you can look back at the archive. Every one of these shows are archived at www.blogtalkradio.com slash ghost, all right? You can look back there three weeks ago. I was telling everybody while all the Wall Street investors out here were walking around ballless, you know, like a bunch of no balls having capitalists not knowing what the hell to do with their goddamn assets, selling off. I was the only one up here saying, hey, it's time to start getting in on some of these bottom feeding opportunities. When we saw the Dow Jones Industrials at 11,800, I was telling everybody it's time to start making some opportunities out here. When everybody's leaving the market, that's when you should go into the market. That's what made Warren Buffett, the second richest man in the world, a billionaire, all right? That's what made Warren Buffett. That's the key fundamental factor of investing when uh, it, it goes to Warren Buffett's long-term strategy of investment. When everybody's leaving, that's when you should start entertaining possibilities of coming into the market. And then once everybody comes back into the market, you already have shares. Your shares go up by default, baby. You make serious capital like yours truly here. And you can actually sip on some of these goddamn three, $400 bottles of, uh, of liquor, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I love it, baby. I love being a capitalist. I don't know about you people. I love being a capitalist, man. Let me take a sip here. Anyway, take this one sip here, folks. Sorry. Oh, oh man, that's smooth. Anyway, the Dow Jones Industrials today closed out at 12,626. 12,626, an increase of 56.15 points, a percentage increase of 0.45%. I mean, we're seeing consistent increases day in and day out. And why? Because just like I said, I said during the springtime when all the investors were running out of the market, when everybody was running this helter-skelter type investment strategy, I was telling people that, hey, this retraction in economics is only going to be temporary. And the reason that it's going to be temporary was because during the springtime, during the months of uh, March, April, May, even going back into February, uh, we saw an increase in not only the energy prices, but we saw an increase in commodities, which is all the crap that we buy at the grocery store, food and crap. So as a result... All the classes that are underneath the high class, which is the middle class and the so-called PO in America, these people didn't have enough money to go out and spend on these extracurricular activities. You know, So that's why you saw retailers like Walmart, like Target during these times didn't meet up to the street's expectations of earnings. And the reason they didn't meet up to the street's expectation of earnings Given the fact that these are retailers that generally retail to the mass populace and not a niche market retailer per se, they didn't meet up to the street's expectations. Now, who did? Who did? I'll tell you who did. Uh, what was that? It's Tiffany's Jewelers. All right. While everybody was posting, you know, in the retail sector, not meeting up to the street's expectations, you got Tiffany's Jewelers, Williams and Sonoma. 
I mean, you had Lulu, Lulumon Athletica. You know, all these high-end retailers going up the roof. All right, and that's where I was hedging a lot of these uh, retractions and a lot of these sell-offs that I did during that particular time phase. I was putting them in these types of retail stocks. You understand? Now, at this point in time, we're seeing the bounce back from all the middle classes downward. We're starting to see them come out the pocket this summer. Why? Because oil prices have come down. Why? Commodity prices are coming down. That's why. And as a result, you have these people saving. They actually saved. They saved by default because they couldn't go out and afford to blow money in the months of February, uh, March, April, May, June. Or, excuse me, May. Excuse me, June is when we started seeing this, uh, this uh, tick up, if you want my personal opinion. So I'm saying, look, this uh, bounce back is going to extend not only into the back-to-school day sales, but I think it's also going to extend into the holidays Right now, I know that the market still looks a little high, uh, but there are some bottom feeding opportunities for folks to partake in, and I think that you should you should do it. Stop tickling your ass crack, you know, digging for gold in there. It's time for you to start making some serious capital. All right. Anyway, we got S and P 500 on the plus side today. Even though it was down most of the day, it was up modestly 1.34 points, a percentage increase of 0.10 percent. Closing out today at 1,339.22 points. NASDAQ closed up modestly 8.25 points, a percentage increase of 0.29%. Closing out today at 2,834.02 points. And for all the European brethren out there who invest in the FTSE 100, it is down today, believe it or not, 21.11 points, a percentage decrease of 0.35%. Closing out the FTSE today at 6,002.92 points. All right, let's get to the damn commodities because, uh, you know, you saw this uh, uh, this up, uh, this, this gain in equities. You would think that you would see some decreases in commodities, right? Wrong. Once again, we're in a helter-skelter market. You understand? These people don't know what the hell they're doing. They don't know their asses from their elbow. They don't know how to invest. They don't know crap, all right? So anyway, let's get let's get through the let's get through the damn commodities markets. Energy. We got Brent crude oil futures. Brent crude is the oil that's consumed by Asia and Europe for all you ignorant assholes that don't know. It is up today 63 cents, a percentage increase of 0.55% closing out today at $114.24 per barrel of Brent crude oil. We've got gasoline futures up $6.50, heating oil futures up $2.03. Natural gas tanking today, for Christ's sake. If you were in the natural gas sector today, let me tell you something. You were losing some serious capital. I mean, Jesus Christ, it was down 13 cents, a percentage decrease of, get this, 3.16% on the day. Uh, no, that's, that's some horrible lossage. I wouldn't like to wake up and see that. Well, let's get to the WTI sweet crude futures, folks, which is the crude oil, the crude oil that is actually consumed by America here, which affects the prices of not only the gas pumps, uh, but a lot of the retail products that we see in our stores, grocery stores, because it actually takes a truck, a train, some sort of mode of transportation that consumes fuel to get from the producer to the retailer. And it is up today, modestly 12 cents today, a percentage increase of 0.12%, closing out WTI sweet crude at $97.01 per barrel of Brent crude oil. Let's get through agriculture. Canola is up $3.00. We got Cocoa Future down, selling off today, at down $39, a percentage decrease of 1.21%. A sell-off in coffee today. We saw a sell-off in coffee. It's down $2.10, a percentage decrease of 0.78%. We got corn modestly down, not down enough, but it's still down, down $4, percentage decrease of 0.65%. Cotton continues its free fall, for Christ's sake, and it means hopefully that we won't have to continue, continue to see these goddamn douchebag fruity asses that continue to wear these goddamn shirts that are eight times too small for their bodies. I'm sick of seeing that crap. I mean, look, I'm out here in Austin, Texas, all right? I mean, I see these douchebags, all right? I mean, they're walking around all over the place, for Christ's sake, with these dumbass, stupid little fruity ass uh, Ed Hardy t-shirts and the Amber Crombie Fitch and... And all this nonsense, for Christ's sake, I mean, hey, that's enough, all right? That's just about enough. Look, c cotton prices are coming down. There's no reason to dress like this kind of, a, you know, a ridiculous, pathetic, anal douche. There is no reason, all right? Anyway, we've got wheat futures 